know about you, but I love to come to places that represent excellence and style, whether it's something from our past or present. And here I am in Union Station in St. Louis, and this place is fantastic. It looks like a French castle. I'm about to catch up with my friend Francis, who's going to tell us a whole lot more about this place. This was the main entrance to St. Louis Union Station. The station opened on September 1st, 1894. Now, we just said that two weeks before the station opened, two workmen were putting the finishing touches on this floor. On the marble here. Yes, and one of the workmen hit his finger. And he, he was said, working at one end. Exactly. He said something he shouldn't have said, and his buddy said, you better watch your language, you've been warned. And when they turned and looked at each other, they realized they were 40 feet away. <laughs> this is a, the famous whispering arch. It's an architectural phenomenon. When you stand and talk to one side of the wall, your voice hits it, it shoots over the arch, and the person 40 feet away can hear you as if they're standing at your shoulder. And I see the, I see the, great, the great lion. I guess that's the lion of St. Louis? Um, somewhat. St. Louis is more of a bear than a lion. Oh, okay. um, Though Theodore Link, some people say he was superstitious. Huh? So others say that it's references to the Bible. Oh. But as you walk around St. Louis Union Station, you'll notice a few things. Theodore Link did things in sequences of seven. Uh -huh. There are seven arched stained glass windows on each side of the Grand Hall. There are seven lights in each of the windows. Sure. The other thing about Theodore Link is he felt that only a good soul could pass underneath an archway. Really? There's no way to get in or out of St. Louis Union Station without walking underneath an arch. Well, there is something magical about that threat, passing a threshold or moving through a space like that. Yeah. But you know, as a designer, I mean, most designers do recognize the, the power of odd numbers. And um, so I think that was probably weighing on his mind Somewhat, too. I'm yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. But you know, this archway and the layers of gilding and, and stenciling too. I mean, it's, it's sort of the best of William Morris and Pugin and a lot of those great old boys at the end of the 19th century that were yes. so active with this level of decoration, both in England and America. Yes, all the gold in this room is real gold. It's gold leafing. All of the walls are concrete. So as you look at what looks like marble walls, right. it's a painting technique called scagliola, sure. which gives it that marbleized yeah, effect. Yeah, a faux finish. Exactly. Now those seven ladies. I love the fact that they're each holding the lights flames. That, that guided the trains in. But it's they're not statues. It's a type of art called relief tracery. What they are, are the prettiest dust collectors you'll ever see. <laughs> when you have So are they by relief? They just sort of come out just a bit of the wall? They're in the wall. Instead of, most times a statue is outside. You're, you're um, doing your artwork on the outside. So that, this is done on the inside. Ah, so rather than. So it's than, the relief, it's, it's the trace, it's the opposite of so what it rather, would be. So rather than projecting out, it they're, projects actually, in. they're actually projected inward. And then when you have millions of trains backing into a station, you have millions of tons of coal and soot going up in the air. Uh, so that right. the dustier they got, I thought about that. that's how the detail came out. So if we, if we talk about the order of this, you have the head house, which is exactly. this great, beautiful French chateau or exactly. castle. And then you have the midway, which is that midway that, point, that transition space exactly. between that and the train shed. The train shed, which is was the largest in the world. Forty-two tracks underneath it, largest single span, spans more than eleven and a half acres. That's yeah, just wild. But the midway was the site to be seen and to see who was coming in next, what was happening next. Oh, I next. see, right. Francis, this has been such a treat to see this. Thank you for sharing your enthusiasm and this marvelous place with me. I'm, I'm glad you got to experience St. Louis Union Station. We love it and we love to show it to people. Well, I hope to come back soon. It was wonderful meeting you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. If you're enjoying these segments on style, 
check in with us regularly, and make sure you subscribe to eHow Home.